welcome to the Weekly Mac. Today, an episode with time and wine, because wine gets better with time. And because we have a chat about wines and non-alcoholic drinks with the writer and author of the blog Wine and the City, the sommelier Moritzin Folgueras. Prepare for laughs and fun in our guess what? It's about time we made a quiz about time. And don't miss words and facts with Mario Serra, Ana Priscilla Magrigna and our cheeky reporter Humberto Gonzalez. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. Let's begin the Weekly Mac, your TV show in English, hosted by Marcella Topor. Welcome all. Well, I hope you're ready to have some fun, discover new things and learn a bit of English. And as always, today's show is full of sections that we have prepared especially for you, like words and facts with our collaborators, Ana Priscilla, Umberto and Marius. Welcome. Hi. Hi there. Hello. Well, uh, Marius, last week you introduced us to anagrams. Yeah. What about this week? Well, we will just take out Anna and put Chrono. Oh. <laughs> what? You're taking me away. Oh. Chronograms. Have you ever heard about it? What, what do you think can be a chronogram? I have a stab at it uh, because chrono is uh, from chronological, you know, like time. Time. And gram is like telegram, so a chronogram would probably be a, a letter that is sent, but in an order of you know, time, you have to put out the letters in time that they went out. I don't know. Quite, anyway. quite good, but uh, historically, a chronogram is a sentence, a phrase, which contains a date. With the use of these Roman letters, yeah. as we will see, contains a hidden date. Okay. Right? Mm. How interesting. Sounds, exactly. Well, it, it's quite uh, old, an old uh, thing, so we have uh, been documenting it in a very old book as well, <laughs> from the 19th century. Nice. Right? Mm. Wow. Well, we do like puzzles, especially if they come from uh, Marius. And, of course, we expect the solution to last week's guess word. And last time, Humberto Gonzalez looked into the purses of people in San Cugat. Well, I don't think you can get more into people's privacy this time. Well, Marcella, I did. <laughs> uh, it never stops. I, by the time uh, Christmas comes, I may be married to one of these people I interview. Oh, wow. Yeah, it gets really <laughs> personal now. Let's I'm take a look at this. To ask, yeah, I'm afraid Jeez. to ask what uh, happens, but I'm afraid uh, we need to... Uh, have a hint. Uh, Just yes, a let's small take bite. a look at a teaser. Do you think you could be attracted to me? Love your shoes, by the way. Can we take our clothes off? Here? Yes. In the, in the mayor house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're not. Come on. Not please. <laughs> I am going to give us, give you our cards, and if you break up with your girlfriend, call me. <laughs> Danny, oh. okay, hold on just a second there. Uh, You're not here for the money. <laughs> I was, see. That was supposed to be about them, not me. <laughs> um, so um, You're flirting with this guy? Well, I think I, to be honest, I flirted with everybody. I asked everybody <laughs> the same question, ladies and gentlemen. I was not uh, one way or the other. And you're still single? <laughs> okay. Uh, like I said, my, maybe by this Christmas I may have a date. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's as juicy as what we've just seen, I can't wait to watch uh, your video. And Anna Priscilla, last time you already proved uh, wrong the fact that this Disney's body was uh, uh, frozen mm -hmm. and Mount Everest is the tallest uh, mountain on Earth. So what piece of information will you refute today for well, us? Well, I, I have a, a really big question I want to ask you guys. Um, okay, when you go all to the, ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is really important. Um, when you go to the toilet, oh. do you check in which direction the flush, the water goes? <laughs> Have you ever checked that? Well. Yeah, that's a very important matter, actually. I, 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 I've never thought I, I told of. you, yeah, it is a very serious question. But, but I, didn't, I, I didn't know how does it work. Clockwise? Anticlockwise? I, I think I remember seeing it going this way, so that's counterclockwise for the yeah. Northern Hemisphere. Is that right? That's, <laughs> the, that's the thing. We have always uh, listened that in the Northern Hemisphere, yeah. the flush, the, the toilet flush, goes counterclockwise, and in the Southern Hemisphere, it goes uh, clockwise. I heard that too. But I'm here to tell you, my friends, no? That this is not true. My God. No. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. We <laughs> saw that in a... Well, maybe we, we know a lot about this, uh, or we always thought it wrong, because I don't know if you are fans of The Simpsons, the, yeah. the cartoons. I've, I've never seen it. 
Never? Yeah. Uh, no, what? I've never what? seen what? it. I recommend you? You're it. You're from the States. <laughs> I, I watch the Flintstones. Uh, <laughs> so you saw it? That, that says You're a lot so about your age. <laughs> <laughs> In The Simpsons, okay. there's an episode where uh, Lisa explains this to Bart. Yeah. This is called the Coriolis effect, and it's actually true when it comes to weather mm -hmm. such as hurricanes. But uh, it doesn't happen uh, with toilets. So Bart Simpson, he wants to find out if uh, in Australia, the toilet flush goes <laughs> in the other direction, and he calls in Australia, and they say, yeah, it goes the other, the other way around. But it's not true, my friends. It's the Coriolis true. effect just affects uh, hurricanes, and uh, big weather. Uh, so Simpsons, not true? Yeah, no, okay. not, He's not lying true. to us? Yeah, yeah, they were oh lying God. to us. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm really, yeah. really shocked on this one. I didn't know this either. Ah, <laughs> see, I bring things that you didn't know. <laughs> okay, so but the question is, do we actually look at the toilet when we actually are in the Southern Hemisphere? <coughs> or after you get off the toilet or something, do you actually look at it and see what direction it goes? Um, well, you have to look at the <laughs> toilet always. Oh, yeah. always. Always. Okay. Always. Yeah, because you have to if leave not, it clean, my friend. Okay, that's true, that's true. <laughs> you that's have true. to check it out. And <laughs> yeah. speaking about toilets and cleanliness, um, let me ask you another question. No. What do you, no, you don't no, want to. Okay, please. I think Anna Priscilla <laughs> today is in a scatological mood, right? Yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah. After all, I'm Catalan. <laughs> that's very Catalan. <laughs> after right? all, I'm Catalan. Aye. What do you think is dirtier, uh, the toilet seat of your house or your mobile phone? My mobile phone. Oh, <laughs> right answer, <coughs> Marius. Thank you. <laughs> it is true, actually. We would think that maybe the toilet seat would be uh, dirtier than our phones, but not. It's not true. The toilet, uh, the, the phones are seven times dirtier, dirtier. Yeah. than the toilet seats. And at the, the southern hemisphere <laughs> as well? <laughs> they, are, they are dirty as well in the southern oh, hemisphere. Okay. <laughs> they are seven times dirtier than toilet seats and it's actually, th there's a lot of germs in uh, our phones because oh, we wash our hands all the time, uh, hopefully. Hopefully, yes, we all yeah, do course, wash our hands all the time, but we don't wash or we don't clean uh, the... Wash the, them the, better not, right? Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't clean the, the, the mobile phones. No. Um, and I don't know if well, you want to know I this. Well, actually, I do. Uh, actually, you, you, I, you I clean do clean your, mine your phone. Uh, after reading this piece of information. <laughs> uh, I'm going to clean mine too, after uh, this the information, yes. <laughs> There's speckle matter in one out of every six sma smartphones. What? Yeah. One? Out of six? Yeah. One, two, three, four, four. Oh, no. Okay, guys, no go problem. and clean your phones, please, after the program. <laughs> well, I think I'll have to spend all day to uh, get over this, yeah? I'm Anna sorry. Priscilla. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway, Anna Priscilla, I knew there was a reason why you sounded so distant uh, on the phone when you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know why. <laughs> well, I think we'll all uh, answer the smartphones with a different attitude from now on, or at least just go ahead and clean them more often, <laughs> right? That would, be, that would be an answer. And now I think it's a good idea to change the subject and go to chronograms with the Marius. Yeah. I forgot to tell you that this book is very old book, so it must be dirtier than <laughs> mobile phone. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> it's it's okay, Curiosities of Literature by Isaac Israeli. This is from London, 1866. Wow. So it's from the 19th century. Isaac Israeli was an English writer known especially because his son was uh, Sir Benjamin Israeli, who was prime minister okay. at uh, the 19th century. But he was very curious about things, and one of the things I have uh, just read from here is these chronograms. Okay. Let's go to school, to the classroom now. Ooh, back to school. And look at this. Did, did you remember the arithmetical value of each Roman letter, M? For 1,000? I could say yes, but no, I didn't remember. <laughs> but so you <laughs> yes, have yes, here a cheat sheet mm -hmm. to look at, right? Okay. okay, so we remarked the long vowel at the end of the second word. Yeah, it, it was cheat sheet. <laughs> exactly. One, you know? Okay, cheat this cheat. is M for 1,000, but D for 500, C for 100, L for uh, 50, X for 10. This uh, V can be a U as well. Okay. Uh, for 5 and I for 1. 
Okay. Right? Yeah. Easy peasy, right? Yeah. Yeah, it it sounds easy, but we... when it's when you see it written there, okay. it's it's easy. No? <laughs> you, you'll see all the time. But I'm gonna read now the first of the chronograms, because chronograms were particularly popular during Renaissance and Baroque because they are sophisticated. Okay. Uh, they were used at tombstones, for instance and uh, in some great buildings. The first example is on the tombstone of Queen Elizabeth I. Oh. She died in a year, you will have to guess by now. Why are you doing this to us? No. No. She died no, in a year? No. It's, it's, not, it's not very difficult and I will show it immediately, but the chronogram, and look at the initial, says, my, they, Closed is in immortality. My day closed is in immortality. In which century do you think she died? My day closed. Yeah. MD, right? Is MD. My day closed is in immortality. MDC. This is five seconds for you. Four. The 17th century. Three. I'm not even gonna try Two. because I'm gonna get it wrong. <laughs> this is in the, you said the century, right? Yeah. 17th century is what I would yeah, say. Yeah, absolutely, for three Yay! years, but that's <laughs> great. Because well with done. the initials at the tombstone, the initials were in another color. So okay. people could ah, read them. Okay. My, this is for they okay. closed is in immortality. If you add all these numbers, you get the exact year she where died. Elizabeth I was dead. Okay. Right? That's fine. In the 17th century. That, that's great. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do that in mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have another example, but I'm not going to ask for okay, you to you. guess thank the you. number because it's, it's not so simple, but it's uh, very impressive. It's in an only one word, right? It was a Latin word inscribed on a medal commemorating a battle, a battle of Malplaquet, with, in which Duke of Marlborough defeated the French troops. Okay. But in the medal, there's only one word, and that word is lilicidium. Right. Lily what? Lily what? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good so, question. Lilicidium. Okay, well, what does that mean? Uh, maybe I, I, I have to pronounce it in Latin, lilicidium, but in my ah. reading of it, it's lilicidium. This means the death of the lily. Can we have the cheat sheet back on? <laughs> Please. Yeah, but in, just in, in a minute, because okay. uh, with the cheat sheet, you've got the whole answer of okay. the year, right? Lilicidium. Well, the lily are the French. They were the French, so they were defeated. And if lilicidium is the death of the lily, when you take all these oh, okay. numbers, ah. but not in the exact order, but just adding this 50, 1 plus 50 plus 1 plus 100 plus 1 plus 500 plus 1 plus 5 plus 1000, it takes the exact date of the battle. Somebody was really bored that day. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, They've got <laughs> lots of lots of time. There were no television at that time. Oh, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? They didn't have any smartphones. Yeah, oh, no. Yeah. In fact, in fact, this battle was and on the dirty smartphones. on the 11th of September. Oh. Yeah, so it's quite Catalan in this yeah. battle as well, right? A lot of okay. 11 Septembers. Yeah. Now we are going to play a little, and you will play with us. I and love playing. I no, give it I back. Hate playing. We are going to play with our value. Okay, our name. We are what? going to write our name. This is mine, Marius. So I've got here 1,000. Now for A. No for R, one for my I, and five. I can't write it upside down. So my value is <laughs> 1,006. Okay. Right. Wow. So this is my value. Okay. I'm going to give you some blackboards for everyone. Thank you. Okay. okay. And <laughs> you can you. just uh, start making your calculations okay. with your names, Good right? Lord. Priscilla's gonna be here <laughs> okay, forever. Okay, well, are you ready? Anna Priscilla. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Okay. Well, 
Uh, let's we'll see. see. <laughs> uh, anyway, while we are at it, let's watch a short language tip. Thanks. The social convention that we can't escape from, we use it every day. Thank you, thank you so much, or simply thanks. There are many other ways to say thank you, and here are a couple more. I appreciate it. I appreciate it is particularly good, especially when someone does you a favor. You can use it alone or after thank you. For example, oh, thanks for the lift, Tom, I appreciate it. Or you were so kind inviting me to dinner, I really appreciate it. In British English, we normally use the word cheers in informal situations. Yes, cheers, the same word we use when we have a drink. For example, oh, here's that fiver I owe you. Cheers, mate. So, there's two more. I appreciate it and cheers. Cheers. It doesn't matter if you like wine or you don't drink alcohol. To this guest, journalist and sommelier Maricel Falgueras has the right drink for you. Stay tuned. Well, I think we all have uh, our number, right? Yeah, we do. <laughs> Let's see them. You don't seem very yeah. happy. No, because my name is really long and yeah. I just got 150. I thought you would I thought you would get more with yeah. that whole name. Yeah. yeah. Because you've got a C, an L for 50 and two Ice. Ice. So 152. Your yeah. chronogrammatic value is 150. <laughs> it's not that much. <laughs> what about you, Melton? I got a thousand five. Yeah. 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 Well I only done. Got only two letters, and I get a uh, thousand. I thought I would have more because <laughs> my name is longer. Come well, on. <laughs> I got this. I thought you would have more. I yeah. thought you would have like 3,000. The importance of M's you will see now. Ah. What okay. about you, Marcella? Okay, and that's me. Wow. Uh, this is one, yeah, yeah 1,150 because mm -hmm. the M, C and L. And you've got it in the natural way. Mm. I mean, it would be the exact order. Okay. Not <laughs> in your case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh. the value of my chronogram is 1,150. Yeah. Okay, which means I, uh, it's, it's the maximum, so do I which get... Which means you're the winner. You are the winner. Do I, I need to get an award, right? An yeah. award, yeah. <laughs> Maybe in, in some century, when we all will be dead, at your tombstone will be the best chronogram, right? Like the Queen Elizabeth. That's a consolation, yeah? That's a consolation. Okay, well, Marius, that was fun. Mm? Yeah. I enjoyed it uh, a lot, and uh, we surely learned uh, new yeah? stuff yeah. Yeah. as well. I didn't yeah. know what a chronogram was <laughs> until today. I love your stories. I'm not kidding. Good. Well, anyway, now let's move on to Umberto's video. So, um, Umberto, we've seen already that you made the most of your trip uh, to Ripoll. Yes, I did. Okay, so you went to Ripoll. Um, what was the experience like? Well, first of all, let me tell you about the word Ripoll. I had a hard time with that word. Danny, the cameraman, had to take I don't know how many takes because he would say, Umberto, it's not Ripoll, it's Ripoll, Ripoll, well Ripoll. Done. You have yeah, to, well done. Yeah, this is actually the actual nightmare of me speaking <laughs> Catalan, that double L. At the end, at especially the end. at the end of our yes. word. So, um, so we went to Ripoll. I mean, mm -hmm. why Ripoll? Because Is there anything there special that you are attracted about? Yes, the legendary Comte Arnau. Oh, yeah. The Count oh, Arnau, yeah. who was uh, legendary for uh, Forbidden Love, which is the subject of what I'm bringing about today. And uh, this guy at age 15 was forced to marry a woman twice his age who they said was not very pretty. <laughs> Actually, they said he was, she was not very pretty at all. So he fell in love with another girl, but this girl actually had to join the monastery of San Juan de las Abadesas. So he went from one forbidden love where he was half her age to another forbidden love with a woman devoted to God. What, he couldn't go there either. So, uh, so we went to uh, Ripoll, and we actually um, started asking people if they had a forbidden love uh, that they actually wanted to tell us about. <laughs> Tough okay. question. Not anyway. easy, not easy. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and take a, a view at the video and see what they said. Today we are in Ripoll, and we are gonna discuss forbidden love. 
Let's see what people have to say about their forbidden love, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, this is like 007. Come on, Danny. What? We decided to check in on the uh, Televisión de Ripollés and see what's going on in here, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have a forbidden love story that you want to tell us about? Yes, you do. Come on. <laughs> I fell in love with the boyfriend of my best friend. What happened? <laughs> it was a good plan. <laughs> and do you ever see her outside or run into her? Yes, well, we don't speak. So you've never been attracted to somebody's, somebody else's husband? Well, <laughs> maybe physically, probably, yeah. Uh huh. Have you ever had a, what you would call a forbidden love affair? Well, she was. Uh, dating someone else, but hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the other one was a completely asshole. It was easy for me to to break them up. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so wait, uh, so they were together when you started seeing her? Yes. Mm, yes. I like this one. <laughs> okay. I was very handsome, and I've never met the other the other person because actually I was afraid of him because. He's actually four years older than me. And I was like, oh, fuck. He can punch me in the face. Did you have relations, sexual relations with your girlfriend before oh. the breakup? Oh, mama, no, yeah. no, no. no. Oh. I'm a good boy. <laughs> I know, but I, I thought maybe, uh, okay, I, no, I was no. thinking maybe you were really good. You oh, know. no, no. <laughs> but have you ever been attracted to somebody older? I am a, a football coach, so maybe, a mother or so. People younger than me, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Do you know what we call that in the United States? No. A cougar. Oh, you really? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> if I'm 56, would you date me? Yeah, why not? Hmm. I may get a number, Danny. <laughs> like maybe your mom, one of your mom's friends, you know, that she brought to the house. No. <laughs> oh, <God>. come on, <laughs> no. tell me in my ear. No, I can't, we don't I can't. have. <laughs> <laughs> this is. I think there was. I think there's a story behind this. Yeah, no, no, no. So, you know, I had like sweet dreams with some mamas in the town, but not just dreams. Just dreams. Just exactly. dreams. Just dreams. And just teenager dreams. <laughs> Do you know what these uh, mamas uh, are called in uh, in America? Oh, we're actually all over the... Yeah. Actually? Yes. God! It is completely a meal nowadays. So... Oh my God, Ripoel exceeded my expectations of what I could find in this village. I never thought I would hear any and more of the stories that some of them you did not get a chance to hear because they told me not to tell. But we will talk about them on the set. Okay, before we go on, I want to go ahead and thank the people at uh, our colleagues at TV Dal Repoyes. Uh, Ripoyes? Am yeah. I saying that right? Yeah. yeah. Ripoyes. 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 <laughs> uh, because they were amazing. They were so helpful. Uh, they were so uh, open-minded, so easy to work with. They uh, received us like kings, me and Danny, and they treated us excellently. And, and they have a place that I felt like I was a 007. I walked in there, doors opened <laughs> automatically. Yeah, it looks the, amazing. The floor lit up. Anyway, uh, Umberto, I said that before, but it seems that you're not in here for the money. <laughs> <laughs> I am probably going to get married, like I said, by uh, Christmas with one of these people I interview. <laughs> um, you said you had more stories to share with us on the set. Yes, okay. Uh, one woman uh, was telling me that, uh, that uh, she was married, oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. she had other affairs. But she, she said it in front of the camera? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, but I told Danny not to, uh, I told Danny to cut it off because I didn't <laughs> want any problems going on in Repoil and people calling me up and saying, oh my God, Umberto, what's going on? So uh, yeah, it, but it was actually um, great. Um, I loved how everybody was so open and... Maybe you uh, could become a priest, you know? People trust you with the uh, dream With their lives. Yeah. I Either that or I could be the next, uh, what was that guy's name? Jerry Springer. Oh, oh that's Jerry Springer. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, now I want to ask you guys, have you guys ever had any forbidden love? No, it has always been easy. <laughs> oh. my, my, my love life has always been easy oh. and plain. Wait a minute, I have her ex-boyfriend on the set to come <laughs> over. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> I love that guy uh, talking about sweet dreams. Oh, yeah. Yes. Dreaming all the time. Yeah. yeah. I thought I'm maybe like... they were wet dreams, yeah. in fact. Well, I think that's what he insinuated, but he yeah. called it... Uh, sweet. Yeah, sweet, sweet. Yeah, he, he said a... it in a nice way. He <laughs> said he was discreet. Yeah, I was surprised. Um, to see how people, the facility, you know, with which people share their yeah. like secrets, because these forbidden love stories are, are, are like uh, you know secrets, and they were so open to you. What did you do to make them open? So <laughs> you much drug them to, to, to uh, share your soul. That's your virtue. You? Yeah. I, I flirt a little bit, uh. a little bit, but uh, <laughs> you didn't notice that, right? Yep. But but the story to the Kanta. Uh, Cantar now, yeah. is that he later came back in a dark ho or horse uh, that shot flames out of his nostrils, and uh, he basically uh, haunted uh, the village of San Juan de las Abadesas um, for a long time. So I was afraid that after I did the, these interviews, that some other person was going to come <laughs> back and haunt us because some of these stories were a little bit not discreet. Yeah. yeah. Thank you as well. Yes, yeah. kinky. Is that a word that you like very much? Yes, I love that word. And I, yes. Kinky, they were kinky. Actually, is the, the, the similar the translation in Catalan for... For uh, kinky? Morbo. What would that be? Si. Morbo. 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 I, just, yeah, si. I just learned Morbo and they just learned kinky. We're <laughs> learning here. You, you have to know that uh, Comter now finally got uh, her pregnant. What? Oh. Inside the monastery. <gasps> I did not know that. Yeah, that's the end of the story. Are you going to bring us a book on that one? Yeah, <laughs> why not? Okay. <laughs> next next, uh, next week, time. I can. Yeah. Well, we could go on and on for hours, but our time for words and facts is running out. We still have the guesswork puzzle, Marius. Yeah, for last, week's. last week was conferences, conferences about social codes. Any idea? It was 11 letters. It's, it wasn't easy. Conferences, social codes. That one's a hard one for me. Yeah. <laughs> conventions. Oh. Conventions. Yeah, because a convention is a conference yeah. and social code. Uh, okay. It's conventional, ah, right? Okay. It's a convention. Ah. Yeah, good one. And uh, for next week, what is Next week, I think it's not kinky, but <laughs> tricky. Oh. Quite tricky. tricky. It's a disadvantage, but it could be a useful hat. Eight letters. It's a disadvantage, but it could be a useful hat. Eight letters. Mm. Okay, it's a disadvantage, but it could be a useful hat. Eight letters. That's quite a puzzle for you, but I'm sure uh, you can crack it soon enough. Be the first to post your answer. And Anna Priscilla and Umberto, thank you so much. It thank was you. a pleasure, thank as you. always. Marius, until next time, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back with an interesting chat with the sommelier Maricel Falgueras with tips, reports and much more. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, today's guest grew up in the family wine cellar and she has lived also between vineyards in Tuscany. In a business ruled by men, she has made her own path and has made wines easy and entertaining, for the non-experts even. Well, today we have a chat with the awarded sommelier, writer and author of the blog Wines and the City. But first, take a look at the glossary.
If you don't have a clue about the wines world, don't worry because you'll be able to boast about it after watching today's interview. To boast means to talk very proudly about something that you have done or that you own. Pay attention to another verb, to pair. If one thing is paired with another, it is put with it. So when talking about wine, pairing is the process of matching wines with food dishes to enhance the dining experience. There's something you want to avoid when drinking wine though, and that is the hangover. If you wake up with a hangover, you feel sick and have a headache because you have drunk a lot of alcohol the night before. And the last expression of the glossary is to help oneself. When you tell someone to help themselves, you invite them to serve themselves, especially with food. Well, Marichel Falguer is welcome to the Weekly Mag in the first place. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, you come from a generation uh, of uh, people who dedicated their lives mm -hmm. to wine and spirits. Actually, you are the fifth yes. generation. What yes. was the first memory about wine that you can remember? I have been always there because my grandmother was in the wine shop in uh, Valle Spirit Street and everyone was uh, working there and I was just playing with my Barbies and the bottles and you know my father was born in, in, the, in the cellar and we say de Gelida it's part also of our family. Mm -hmm. So it just uh, was natural for you to uh, to dedicate yourself as well to, to, to wine. Well, mm. and you explain wine in a fun way, in an entertaining way, but also personal and uh, quite didactic. You've written uh, a few books. Um, I want to mention one which is called Boast About Wines in Seven Days, which goes for the fifth edition. Yes. Wow, that's, yes. uh, that's yes. quite uh, a lot. So, which are the main things we need to know about wine? A good wine is a wine that you love. It's like art, you know, you don't need to, to know, yeah, if you know about uh, the author, about his love story, about, you can see a lot of more things there. And also if I explain you how it was the soils, the climate, uh, the winemaking, but we need to keep it easy with the wine. You just need to enjoy with the food pairing, with your friends, and for that, it's important to try and to drink a little, but very, very good. Mm -hmm. Just a little, right? With moderation always. Yes. No? Moderation yes. and precaution. And for me, uh, to be very strong with that, because the culture of wine is not that. The culture of wine is moderation, is art, is culture, and is the part of our country. As they say, I don't know if you heard this uh, saying in English, which goes like that. I think if I'm not mistaken, it says uh, one glass uh, is not enough, two glasses is okay, third glasses is not enough again. So, <laughs> so it's all about moderation, right? Yeah, uh, in, in the Greece times, uh, the king of the banquet uh, was a person who was uh, taking care about how many glasses you need to drink. Wow. And it was like very professional and uh, it was all, th all thought, all, all the beverage, all the quantity of water to blend with the wine. Don't do that at home, but in the Greece epoch, yes. Well, tell me about your blog, which is called uh, Wines and the City, uh, winesandthecity.com. Uh, this uh, blog has won many awards, among which the prestigious Gourmand World Awards, which is the world's leading gastronomic uh, awards. How does it feel? It feels that I wanted to be like Sex and the City, you know, the city of Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah, yeah, Wines and the City, it's a yeah. good name. And I want to be the Carrie Bradshaw of wine. Now I don't have as much glamour because <laughs> I am a hysteric mother, but it was nice to try with high heels and to put a little of feminist and girls style and fun and I love fashion mm -hmm. and, you know, wine and fashion always nice things and optimistic things. Mm, that's, a, that's a good way to put it. Um, actually, 
you wrote not just about wine, but uh, you wrote a book uh, about non-alcoholic drinks yes. called What to Drink When You're Not uh, Drinking. So why why did you write it? Uh, we have it here today. <laughs> it was a little, a little bit weird. My father and my husband was like, you are crazy, you know? <laughs> why you are doing that to the wine wall? And I said, no, this is because I love so much the wine wall. Mm -hmm. I need to do this book because for children's, for I, I write it when I was pregnant, but when you are, you are breastfeeding, and for example, my best friend is alcoholic, and it's very difficult when you go to a restaurant and you cannot drink alcohol or you don't want. Mm -hmm. It's like it's very difficult to pair. It's very difficult also because everyone asks you, why you are not drinking? Are you pregnant? Are you on under antibiotics? And you are like, no, it's just that I, I'm taking the car or I'm, yes. you know, or I need to work or study. Okay, today you brought a lot of uh, nice stuff here. So um, I just think you're going to prepare something for us, See. right? So what is it? What do you have in mind for us? I have in mind, Marcella, one cocktail that it's super good. That is mm -hmm. cafe tonic. Mm. It's like a um, psychological gin tonic. Yeah, psychological gin tonic. A psychological gin tonic. Gin tonic. Yes. I've never heard that. I like it. Marcella, it's very good <laughs> on Saturday nights when you cannot go out and you are at home working. You prepare, but you prepare it always with glamour. Can I, can I so, go? Yeah, so yeah. let's go here and let's start. And yes, the problem is when you don't drink alcohol and people take out the nice glasses, like the Riesling or Chianti type of glass. The, the right way is to put uh, this gastronomic way to use a nice glass, for example, this balloon, or people say, what do you need? And I forget to tell a spoon, but okay. with a nice spoon, or oh, I will do it. Just, just like this? Just no. like this. I'm from, I am from Sands. I can do everything <laughs> also with glamour. But the thing is, you need to have good eyes. A lot of cocktails okay. are not good because if the water is not good, it uh, makes you the, the day before, the day, af the day after. Yes. To have, how you say? A headache. Headache. Or a hangover. Hangover, mm, yes. Yeah, and we don't want a hangover. Yeah, but this is sometimes is fault for um, oh. the quality of the water of the ice. Yes. Really? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, and this well, is the I, reason we why... We need to keep that in mind yeah. then. When you drink alcohol or not, always with very good eyes. Mm -hmm. And the thing is... Okay. No, tell me, tell yeah. me. No, I was just going to ask you if you have uh, any favorite non-alcoholic drinks. I... For... Yeah? Many. Wow. Just I, a few. I love teas and I love pairing food with teas. Asiatic, really? Wow, Asiatic cuisine. Pairing food with teas, that's yes. interesting. Mm -hmm. But to go out, this is super. You recommend this? Yeah. Okay. We, we need an espresso, okay? Mm -hmm. Remember that a good espresso. Yeah, espresso is 40 milliliters mm -hmm. and with a good cream. Okay. But you put after the, after the ice. Mm -hmm. And this is like a way to do a ah, psychological gin tonic, but you put... <laughs> I love that, psychological gin tonic. Yeah, this is tonic, uh, cafe tonic, sorry, but really, Marcella, with that, you don't need any more to drink any Red Bull or any <laughs> of that. You I never thought about this combination. The bitterness, try it. Mm -hmm. Try it, please. Okay. Well, cheers, right? I see. <laughs> Or maybe like this, no? Should I uh, take it like this? Yeah, always. And my because fingers like this. If not like that, you are warming in. So and, and also it's more elegant, know, more stylish. Of course, like that. we want to be stylish. Yes. But Marcella, <laughs> sorry because I love bitterness. For me, bitterness is uh, my favorite taste. Mm, excellent. I, it is really, really delicious. So Marichel, what else have you brought for us today? Because it's autumn. Mm? How, how you say? Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, me too. And I love the color also yeah. because if I do a disaster. It's brilliant. Your, yes. your, your shirt is the same color, but it's we can, not on purpose. We can do it like that. Mm -hmm. Or also, okay. I love some really nice uh, pomegranate. See, pomegranate, but, sorry, pomegranate juice. But, also like that, you know, that you have like the bubble tea that you buy when you are in New York, it's the same, but with, uh, with this fruit, that it's uh, anti, um, 
Antioxidant. Yeah, like the wine. We don't have the wine, but we have okay. the color. And sometimes water, because it has no color, is a little bit sad. Mm. And for uh, the non-alcoholic drinks, it's very important we, we we said about the glass, but also about the color, because when I was Penyan, it was everyone with this red uh, wine and this meat, and I was with, <laughs> but the, mm, I was doing, for example, a lot of uh, juices of uh, strawberries, blueberries, you know, also to put the color, and because it was good also with the meat, mm -hmm. with that meat, for example. Okay. So this is a pomegranate cocktail with yeah. Pomegranate, of course. Si, sí. and. And? The sparkling water, also alone, it's very interesting because, Marcella, you know what is a menage a trois? <laughs> si? Anybody knows that, I think, right? Eh. Anybody knows, but anybody <laughs> Well, I didn't it. say anybody practices yeah. it. Yeah. We just yeah. know what it means. But we can do a menage a trois with the pairing, always playing with the wine, with the water and with the food. Nice. Okay? But a lot of, uh, of people didn't care about the water and it's very important. Firstly, because the mineral water also in this coffee that we prepare, it's so important for mm -hmm. the mouth feeling and for, um, for the aromatics. Okay, so menage a trois, a mm -hmm. nice uh, good cocktail and colorful with pomegranate, sparkling yes. water and that's it? Yeah, and with ice or with a little bit Very of, easy, no? of, of lemon. Yes, wow. but uh, look, it seems a cosmopolitan, mm -hmm. okay, but it's not. And this, uh, this water, this sparkling water has a lot of minerals. And so we add some uh, lime juice. Yes. Maricelli, we'd like uh, you to, uh, so this is a glass for, um, for our collaborator, Malcolm, who will join us ah, in a minute, yes. okay? But uh, that will be after a sip of stand-up comedy with the giggles. <laughs> I used to have this aunt when I was younger that would poke me in the side at every wedding saying, you're next, when's it your turn, when's it your turn? She stopped when I did it to her at a funeral. You're next, when's it your turn? After the humor of Roberta Marquez, let's welcome our collaborator, Malcolm Otero, a man of culture and drinks, Malcolm. I love this. It's going to be my <laughs> motto, culture and drinks. <laughs> well, we've got here some uh, wonderful cocktails. One is for you. Please help yourself. Okay. Not to warm it. And um, I don't know, what do you think about non-alcoholic drinks, Malcolm? I got to say that. For me, that the fact that she wrote a book about uh, soft drinks, it's almost a personal affront for me <laughs> because. But taste you know, it first. No, you should taste it first, and then and then you will. Cheers. The psychological cosmo <laughs> party girls. It's very good. I gotta say, it's very good. I gotta admit it. But, it's you know, delicious. When it was, it's very refreshing. It's very refreshing, very good mm -hmm. and very tasty. Yep. Thank you. When I was a teenager, my my nightmares were the rejection of a girl I liked, you know, a pimple on the tip of my nose, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, I, I know, yeah, then it, there has to be non-alcoholic drinks for if you're pregnant, breastfeeding, if you're an alcoholic, whatever. But don't you think that this kind of mocktails are like a fake plastic Louis Vuitton, fake sneakers. <laughs> I know that mocktails is, is difficult, but uh, really it's very easy to do it. And also for, uh, for children. If not, they are always drinking cola, etc. Like fizzy with drinks. Sugars. Yes, mm -hmm. and here you put uh, fresh fruit. You have the color, you have a kind of sweetness. And it's, and it's easy for a party, for a mm -hmm. brand. Yeah, so Malcolm, you know what to do to surprise your children today, yeah, no? Yeah, and I think it's home? good for children. <laughs> it's good for children, <laughs> I will say that. In a romantic dinner, tell me the truth. Yeah. What, do, what would you prefer? The guy who sniffs the wine, who gurgles, who moves the, the glass, uh, to turns the glass thousands of times, or the one who fills the glass to the edges? <laughs> Oof, difficult question. No, I, I, I prefer because my husband is a winemaker and 
we cannot talk dinner with uh, wine because if not, we are all the dinner talking about wine. You know, mm, yeah, I prefer the wine that moves around. Okay. <laughs> around, yeah. Okay, another question, mm -hmm. another one for you. In your blog, you have post called, let me read it. Tell me what you drink and I tell you what, you, what kind of person you are. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to ask the opposite. Can you give, give us a wine for a specific famous people? Okay. F famous person, for instance. Donald Trump and the president of China, which kind of wine would be suitable for that? Malcolm, you know that uh, Trump has his own winery in Virginia. Is it good? Uh, I, I, I didn't taste it, but um, they, my, my husband's family has a wine winery in Virginia called Barbersville, and it's very close to. And the winery of Trump now, it's very fashionable to do a lot of marriage and parties and etc. Yeah, Trump, you know, he needs to put his bottle in the table because he needs always to, wow. Okay, sure. a wine for George Clooney. Oof. No, <laughs> George Clooney don't drink wine. <laughs> he, he loves this part of Italy, of Como, uh, but uh, I prefer the wines of Lago di Garda with Rondinella, Morin, Molinara, all these uh, Italian red indigenous varieties. But with Clooney, I will take a ristretto from India with a very spicy aromatics. Well, surprising. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's an espresso boy. <laughs> <laughs> and for Mr. Bean, for instance. Oh, for Mr. Bean, something that pair with beans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> carbonic maceration wine <laughs> style, like uh, Garnet, Beaujolais Nouveau, or here we have a lot of Garnachas, or Maceración Carbonica from Rioja Tempranillo. Well, okay. and the last one, uh, with Marcella, and I'll with tell me. you, you nailed it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A dinner with Marcella, yeah, would be see. the one. No, with Marcella, we need Rosé Sparkling. Oh. I'm sure about this. And we have here, uh, in San Salvador, in Anoya, in Penedes, in Aleya also, very nice examples with a trepat variety, but you are a peanut. A peanut noir girl, I know. Well, she nailed it, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, congratulations, I'm impressed, wow. And the last shot. Which is the right way to be a wine connoisseur mm -hmm. and not to look like a pompous uh, snob? <laughs> like me, when you have been working all your life and uh, I am uh, in Seguir de Gelida, cleaning bottles or taking the boxes of wine of my husband. I, I hate when uh, wine connoisseurs, or you need to be very serious to take serious the wine, you know. I, I am a funny girl, I love to smile, and this is the way I live uh, wine. And I think that is the way to communicate for millennials, um, for everyone also, <laughs> for the people that is not drinking now, but they will drink one day. But I said, what about Malcolm? I know you don't know him very well, but what would you say? Oh, <laughs> no, he needs like a Bordeaux blend or something like that. No, Merlot, Cabernet, oh no, or oh, you are, no, you are this type of freak that love like uh, these uh, varieties that anyone uh, tasted before or that they are doing micro when making, yeah. No, I'm not like a hamburger. I'm a regular guy. See? <laughs> with, with a hamburger? Mm, Cabernet Sauvignon, and you don't put the red, the, no red uh, pepper, the um, green pepper in it, because you have all these capsicum aromas in the Cabernet. Good. <laughs> yeah, you agree? I agree. Malcolm? Well, I can agree. I'll, I'll, I will try, and I will tell you if it's good for me or not. Okay, so Marcel, before we, uh, we end, I know you're writing a new book. Mm -hmm. So what is it about and when is it going to come out? It's about wine. I, I come back to of wine, course. Malcolm. People are not losing me, but uh, um, it's like my Instagram. It's very visual with a lot of infography. And I am, after 10 years of my first book, I am still working how to make more fun, more sexy, mm -hmm. and for 
everyone, for women, men, for everyone. And I, it's not just an ABC, it's an ABCDE. Mm -hmm. I finished with a passport of wine wall and uh, talking about uh, South Africa, California wines, New Zealand, mm -hmm. African wines. We'll buy it. Yeah. Nice, nice, Marichelle. Well, one, we're looking forward to, to uh, reading this book when it comes uh, out. San Jordi. And for San Jordi, next we year. Yeah. Excellent. So we are learning a few things today about wine, but we are already getting to the end of the interview and it's time for the question chain, which is a question for you, uh, Marichelle, from last week's guest. In this case, the performing artists Laura and Monica Guiteras. We would like to know if you have any memory of your grandma. Exactly, or any anecdote that you remember from her and that makes you love her yeah. even more. Yeah, like some tale or some saying that she used to say. But this is not about wine, it's about my grandma. Exactly. Yeah, I have one grandma that was in the wine wall and another no, but uh, for me is that my, my both grandma, they work it always and also take care about uh, the family and they always tell me quien algo quiere algo le cuesta when you want something you do this effort mm -hmm. and and you pay the cost mm -hmm. okay. to have it so it needs uh, everything needs hard work yeah. right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah all great achievements uh, need great work no hard work hard work mm -hmm. okay yeah uh, that's a nice message mm -hmm. and apparently you listen to your grandma but it's si, si, <laughs> si, si, si. and i repeat it every night to my to my child mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. what do you think Malcolm? what do you think about <laughs> i think it's a it's a good uh, your grandmother gave you a great it's a wise sentence uh, i mean it applies to all of us i mean we need to work hard to to survive, but to get to, f to follow your dreams and to follow the things you need mm -hmm. and you want to do what you have. Okay, Malcolm, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it's until, a pleasure. Uh, yeah, it's our pleasure. Until next time, Marichel, a pleasure as well. Thank you, Marichel. Good luck with all your projects. Good luck. <laughs> In English, we say thank you so often that it can sometimes sound half-hearted. If you want to say thank you in a formal situation, we do have other options. One can be, I cannot thank you enough for whatever. For example, Mrs Jones, I cannot thank you enough for your time. Um, another one is, I truly appreciate something. I truly appreciate this opportunity. Or, I truly appreciate your work. As you might have noticed, when we stress what we're thankful for, we sound more sincere. So, I cannot thank you enough for watching. Let's not kid ourselves. Best stories are the best. Today, we've got one for you. It started in Budapest and it's going on in Premier. Love in Translation is coming. Marcel and Boggy, a very tall couple, met in Budapest by chance. They didn't exchange their phone numbers, so the odds to meet again weren't that high, but they managed to do so on the social networks. And now, a few years after, they live happily in Premia with their little son. So let's check out their love story. Hello, my name is Marcel and I'm from Barcelona. Hello, my name is Bogi and I'm from Hungary. And we've been together for eight years. Well, it was in, in a tram in, in Budapest. I was reading a book and suddenly a young lady sat in front of me. Maybe you noticed that I have quite long legs and he moved to the other chair so I had more space and I commented, it's like, oh, it's so nice of you that that, um, that you moved to the other chair and yes. I feel more cozy. She thought I was doing it for her, but in fact I was doing it for myself because I also have very long legs. So anyway, we started chatting. And I was reading a book, I think it was a Spanish book. 
Hmm. And uh, she was learning Spanish, but I spoke Hungarian because I lived in Hungary. So um, when she heard me speaking Hungarian, she thought I was Hungarian. He told me that he actually was from Barcelona, and so I'm like, Oof, what a big-headed guy that he must have been living in in uh, Barcelona for a few years, and now he's saying that that he's from Barcelona. And uh, the funny thing was that... Yeah, uh, you thought I was Hungarian. Yeah, I thought he was Hungarian because he's speaking like with no accent, basically. And he was looking for an address of a friend's house, which is the next door to one of my best friend's house. And she was also going on the same direction, so we, we moved together to the bus and she helped me to find the stop. That's all, and then we said go goodbye, goodbye to each other. Goodbye without yeah. changing, exchanging phone numbers or anything. Yeah. I think I was the one who contacted you. Yeah, yes. I found her in the in the Hungarian equivalent to to the Facebook. The Facebook. Yeah, and and we went for a coffee, but we wo we both had a partner, so we just became friends. And there was a moment uh, when uh, we were uh, we were we didn't have a, a partner, and uh, and I was very interested in visiting Barcelona. Yes, I moved back. In the meanwhile, I moved back to Barcelona, and and she came to visit, and we became closer, and then she moved to Barcelona to to stay together. Something about the food that really surprised me that in many places uh, you eat the side mm, separately from the main dish. I mean, like vegetables separately from from uh, fish or meat, and um, I wasn't used to it. I like the way that the Hungarians conversate a lot. It's very good to, to chat with them. And also the way they open their houses. When you, when you meet somebody, even if it's not a very close person, they invite you to their homes and make you feel cozy there. Probably something I adopted when, after moving here is to have more like an entrepreneurial mind. Um, this is something that I see here with many people that they have an idea, their own idea, and they do uh, try to develop it. I don't like the way they drive. It's terrible. They are very aggressive. They are competing all the time. Maybe counting so much the descents. And the jokes about shitty stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I love traveling, and especially if traveling implies some sort of adventure, going to a place without much planned and improvising a little bit, and doing things that most of people wouldn't do. Um, it requires some uh, effort from me in the beginning, but then I always enjoy it and I love it. And I really like candles and from time to time I buy from a special place or from a special person some magic candles. I make a, a wish and, um, and then I hope that these candles will help us to make these, these wishes come true. I believe none of us remember this moment. No, no. I was the one who started, uh, who crossed the border between being, being friends and being something more. Hmm. But the other border to say I love you, I don't remember that one. Yeah, me neither. She's more romantic, so that's why yeah. I thought maybe it was her, but... Who yeah, knows? but I was also waiting for you to... To, to make... say it first. 
yeah to say it first and to to have this like compromise that we are together uh -huh. so okay Born and grown in Berlin, uh, she moved to Barcelona in 2006 and got involved in the jazz scene. She published her first album in 2009 and she was a vocalist and guitar of the band De La Fe e La Flores Azules, has released two more albums and now is part of Maria Rudez's uh, band. Julian uh, Heinemann, uh, welcome to the Weekly Mag. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Mine, well, you came to Barcelona during uh, for an Erasmus, mm -hmm. and then you decided to stay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. How yeah. come? <laughs> uh, well, I fell in love. So I fell in love with the city. I fell in love with um, with the school. I fell in love with the scene, with the jazz scene. I met a lot of nice people. I fell in love with the sun. So um, I fell in love with a boy. So I, I stayed. <laughs> So it was basically a love story. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. you could say that. Okay. Well, uh, your last project is called uh, The Last Path of Walter Benjamin, with which you have won an award and also has opened uh, the Market de Musica Viva de Vic last September. Mm -hmm. So who is uh, Walter Benjamin? Um, and why was he so inspiring uh, for you uh, so much that you decided to dedicate him this project? Well, Walter Benjamin was a philosopher. He lived, um, well, his um, story was during the Second World War, he was a Jew. So uh, he lived in exile for um, many years in France. And he had a very tragic ending, which, is, which he is known, well, he's kind of most famous for his um, tragic ending, yeah, which was in Port Beau. He escaped France, he crossed the Pyrenees, in a one-day march uh, on a hidden on a secret smugglers trail and um, so he crossed the the French Spanish border uh, illegally and he came to Port Beau and there he couldn't go on because just this one day um, people weren't allowed to go on who came illegally who didn't have an exit visa so um, he was to be sent back the, the day, the next day, and he decided to take his own life at night. So it was a very tragic story. Yeah, very tragic about exile. No, about um, so. So you heard the story, and it impressed you so much that you decided to dedicate it uh, a project. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it was a long process. No, I I had an idea, then I thought about it a little more, and then one thing came to to another. Then I got aware of the, of the Premi, Puch Poret, of the pr music prize you could present a project for. So I decided to present this project uh, to, the, to the prize and they gave it to me. So um, I was able to, to really create this project and to compose and to, to create with uh, my colleague Samuel, as a good friend of mine, he's a photographer. And um, so we created this project uh, together, and it's not only a musical thing, it's a, it's a show. Uh, it's a visual show, and uh, with, it's a concert with a lot of presence of um, mm -hmm. Well, of you brought us uh, today this, uh, yeah. uh, this album, this booklet, no? Yeah, it's, it's a about... little art mm -hmm. book, yeah, mm -hmm. you could say in English, um, because we didn't, uh, we didn't publish a CD yet. I wanted to take it slowly. Yeah, uh, take your time. Take my time. <laughs> Uh, but we did want to publish something along with a project. So um, since this project is, there is um, big involvement of visuals, you know, of the photographies and quotes. So we, s we decided to do this little publication. So which it includes, is, uh, it includes photographs, photographs right? yeah. It has like single, part, single um, pages yeah, with photographs of the project um, from Samuel and also quotes uh, from the show from Bata Benjamin okay. and uh, other quotes from the songs. Yeah, and it also has little scans from my notebook, the sketchbook that I filled out like all year, um, creating this project and creating the lyrics and... What was like to, uh, to open uh, the Marcada Musica Viva da Vic? Well, it, it, was, it was great. It was a very great, good experience. It was an honor to be the opening concert and um, so it, 
uh, yeah, I was nervous, and um, but I think everything went super well. It yeah. got a lot of good critics, and uh, I think people liked it. It was maybe it was surprising, yeah, because um, the um, the scenery was very special. So we had um, a kind of the visuals involved the musicians on stage. So it was, um, I guess, it, it was a great thing you know, mm -hmm. for me it and was actually, great. You're going to take this show to Purbol, right? Yeah. Um, this yeah. month of November? Yeah, on the 30th of November we are part of the Memoria Democratic, uh, Walter Benjamin, and um, on the last day we will have this concert in Portbow itself. Okay, well in this project about Walter Benjamin you sing in uh, quite a few languages, Catalan and Spanish, mm -hmm. German, French yeah. and English of course. So uh, do you speak all these languages? Why did you decide to, to include all these languages in the album? Well I wanted to um, to include all the languages that have something to do with this history, with the story mm -hmm. of Benjamin. So actually I don't sing in English. <laughs> it's just, no, <laughs> it's Spanish Catalan, uh, mostly okay. German and French, since he parted okay. from France. I don't really speak French, I have to say, um, but I, I did write just some lyrics. To sing well, something. I wanted to include uh, texts in, in French and I had some help and I... It made sense to include French, of course. Yeah, so mm -hmm. one, one song has French lyrics and I... Yeah, I sing them and I, I know what I sing, I mean, I <laughs> but I don't, I, I couldn't speak French with you, like, I, I speak in English. <laughs> okay, so you collaborated during your career with many musicians, yeah. from here with, uh, with many bands. How do you manage to combine uh, so many projects? And I know you also teach, Yeah. so um, how do you manage to do all that? Well, mm. it's a good question. <laughs> do I manage? It's not easy, right? <laughs> well, um, you know, yeah, sometimes um, it's a lot of work, really, because uh, to be a musician and to survive, kind of, no, uh, you have to do a lot of things and to combine it with, with many things. So I do always enjoy playing with other bands and not being the, um, the leader, you know. I, that's why I always, I always collaborated with other bands. Exactly, to main just a few, like we mentioned before, De La Fe y Las Flores sí. Azules, yeah. right? Yeah. Or right now with uh, Maria yeah. Rodez, yeah. also Marco Mezquida, to mention yeah. uh, just a few. Marco Mezquida, yeah, we did have a personal project, it was a, or it is a duo, yeah, we also published a, a CD, an album with that, but with the other bands you mentioned, De La Fe and Maria Rodez, I'm, I'm like a musician of, of part of the band, I play the guitar and I sing uh, the vocals uh, to support uh, the, the leaders of the band. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we made good friends and I really enjoyed the experience to, to play with them and be on tour with them and I, I really learned a lot uh, playing with them and also being on tour with them, yeah? mm -hmm. talking and learning about the culture and how people live here and think. And, uh, in terms of uh, a style, a musical style, how would you uh, uh, describe or just tell us a few words about this uh, new project of yours? Well, this new project, it was um, kind of a journey for me too. So when I started, I, I knew I, I didn't want to write lyrics myself. I wanted to um, look for lyrics from other exiled um, artists. So okay. I looked for poets from that kind of time, from those years, like in 1940. Uh, German poets, which also went to exile, or um, uh, Spanish poets. So I looked, I read a lot of poetry, and I kind of also uh, quotes. I, I pick, picked out quotes and I wrote them down, and I kind of um, musicalized well those poems or some quotes of them and put them in another context. I played with those quotes, so. Um, Sounds like a That's hard about work. the lyrics, <laughs> <laughs> and musically, I, I first started a, um, with acoustic instruments, yeah, like with guitar and piano and voice. But uh, then I kind of switched. I changed the idea, and I, I started to experiment with electronic sounds, which was like my last years um, of my music career. Okay. I always experimented more with electronic sounds, with synths and. Um, electronic beats so that's um, the end of the that musical journey of this project was that I decided for those electronic sounds so it's it's pop it's pop songs but with an experimental touch 
and a little touch of improvisation too. And um, yeah, intense music, yeah. Intense. Intense, but minimalistic also, minimal. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you going to perform for us today? Well, you know, I, um, I wanted to sing an English song, yeah, since this is an um, English program, so I couldn't sing any song from the project since there is no song in English. Okay. But I, I, did, um, I did remember a song um, that I wrote for another project that I have, which is Luca. Yeah, it's an electro pop duo, and we published a CD. It's called Slow Dancer. And there's one song on it that we never really performed because it is a very quiet, intimate song. And I kind of thought, wow, well, I didn't really play this song so often, and I, I felt like playing this song. Okay, today. it's called Child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and it's about? Well, it's about. Um, yeah, it could be about love, it could be about motherhood, it could be about a nostalgia, about past and present, and it could be about a lot of things. I think everyone can decide for his own. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Well, Juliana Heinemann, thank you so much for coming today to the Weekly Mag, and good luck thank with you. all your projects. Thanks for inviting me. And sometimes things break, but not everything breaks the same way. To know how to break things in English, pay attention to the tip from International House Barcelona. So we break things all the time, but in English we don't always use the verb to break because it depends on what we break and how we break it. So Tim, give me something to break. Okay, break this. Okay, so with paper, we don't break it, we tear it. Mm -hmm. So we can tear it in half, mm -hmm. we can tear off a piece, yeah. or we could just tear it up. Yeah. So, what's next? What about this? What are you going to do to this? Okay, so with cloth, we can also tear it, but we can also rip it. Mm -hmm. So we could rip off a piece, yeah. rip it in half, rip it up as well. So something else we can do with this is we can crumple it and we make it into a ball like this, okay? Which we could also do with a piece of paper as well. But, very important, um, crumple sounds a lot like another verb, crumble. Okay, do you want to crumble something? Yes, so we crumble a biscuit. So it's when we crumble it into small bits and we also do this with things like biscuits, cheese perhaps. Mm -hmm. Bread, things like that. Yeah. Okay, what else, what else can we break? So we could also, do you want to pop something? I'd love to pop a balloon, yes. Go. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> so, what else? Okay. <laughs> our phones as well. Sometimes we can damage our phones in lots of different ways. Yes, so for example, I might scratch my phone, maybe Please with don't. my keys. I won't, don't worry. Okay, okay. can I have it back? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I think you cracked the screen. <gasps> Sorry, Tim. <sighs> What else? Well, what about this? Okay, glass. so with glass, mm -hmm. yeah, normally we have to be very careful with it. Exactly, do you want to take okay, it? Okay, yeah. Oh. Tim, I it think it's shattered. Yeah. Damn. Oops. We've broken lots of stuff. Well, there are all the different things you can break in lots of different ways. Bye. i
And now it's time for the One of Us uh, section. Today we are traveling to Aguila de Segarra, which is a very tiny village in Bages, where the uh, Lithuanian Cristina settled a few years ago. She lives happily there with her husband and three kids and has become just one more of the locals. Don't miss this video. So my name is Kristina Nastopkaite, I'm from Lithuania and I've been living in Catalonia for about 20 years. I live in Aguila de Segara now. Before coming to Barcelona I lived in Italy and, and then I had an Italian boyfriend who wanted to study architecture in Barcelona because around 2000 it was really in. And so I just followed him and then at a certain point I decided that what I wanted to change my lifestyle really. And so then I found a house in Arguilada de Segara just by chance, like I was looking anywhere in the countryside in Catalonia so it could have been whatever, like from Garocha to Maresma, etc. But, um, but yeah, apparently my place uh, was here in Arguilada de Segara. The town has changed a lot. Now there are a lot of families. Half of the population, most probably, is not from Aguila de Segara. But 10 years ago, yeah, of course, people were looking at me as if I was a strange uh, <laughs> insect or something. But just a bit at the beginning, you know, as everywhere, like there are prejudices, but, but you can overcome it easily. I mean, if you speak Catalan, you kind of get directly to their hearts, I feel, you know, and the and connection is absolutely different. Here in the town, we don't have a bar, nor we do have a shop. There is a, like a social center, which is open just in the afternoons and on the weekends. So, so yeah, so we mostly socialize there with the neighbors on the weekends and on Fridays the kids have a football team and my husband is their, is their trainer. So, so usually at Friday night we have, you know, we have a beer there or we have even a dinner there, there is an option as well. We have a net really of people from the town we are really friends with, so like this summer uh, I was watching my kids life and like I, I was like oh my god you know it seems like from a movie from a really happy childhood movie and you know some friends of the middle one would come and they would pass by pick him up go to the swimming pool then I would go to the swimming pool and and, and all of a sudden there would be like 10 children playing here so uh, it is a really nice network and it is a really nice way of life, like very, it flows, you know. And the biggest event of the town of Aguila de Sagara is Carameyas, which is this traditional uh, uh, dancing and singing on the Easter. And, and it's really nice because here they go with a tractor and it's a really big feast. So then the whole weekend is like a huge feast for the children who participate and also for the parents. Like most of the elder people of the town are really nice and really proud of Aguilar and they participate, you know, in Carame, as they said, and in a Christmas theater show that the kids organize and yeah, it's, it's nice. I think I wouldn't be able to live in a city now. 
because just waking up in the morning and looking out of the window and seeing the mountains and seeing the fields and hearing the birds sing uh, I think there is no it has no price like it's it's awesome and, and I really love it. And then also I think for children to, to grow up here, I think it's wonderful because it's a very, it's a, it's a very sane way of living, very simple. And yeah, I think there are lots of advantages. Even though I have a kid who is a teenager, he's 14 years old. So of course he has different needs. But I always tell him, you know, when you grow up, you will understand what does it mean to wake up in the morning and light the fire and have a fireplace on the whole day and be very much in contact with the nature. So I think it's a good basis for them uh, to spend their childhood here. Whatever they will do then later, it will, it will help them, I think, in a lot of ways. Do you have the time to play about time? Don't miss our Guess What Quiz, presented and spice up by Sergi Cervera. back and let's begin the last part of the weekly mag with our quiz that will be after a couple of book recommendations from Salvador and Aneida from the Xercha de Bibliotecas Municipales of the Diputació de Barcelona. About a Boy is one of my favorite books and the question is I don't know who the boy is in About a Boy. Uh, one of the options is that uh, the boy in About the Boy is a very young teenager who is too mature for his age. He comes from a dysfunctional family. The other option is that the boy in About the Boy is an adult who does not want the responsibilities he should have at his age. On occasions I think that the reader is the boy in About the Boy because we are a bit of both in our society. Could you solve this riddle to me? Who is the boy in About the Boy? Read it and tell me all about it. Anything is Possible is a compilation of short stories written by Elizabeth Strout. Elizabeth Strout is the author of Olive Kittridge and she won the Pulitzer Prize for this novel. And also my name is Lucy Barton. In Anything is Possible, um, Lucy Barton is one of the characters and it's actually set in the hometown of Lucy. It, it works as a prelude of, of the novel. And so if you've, you've read My Name is Lucy Barton, you will enjoy it a lot. A couple of recommendations to keep in mind. And it's time for our Guess What? Let's get our quiz started and welcome without further delay our quiz master, Sergi Cervera, the man in the vest himself. Hi, Marcella. That's right. And as Tina Turner once said to me, you're simply the best. Of course. Sorry, I had to do it. I know. I, I, at least she laughed, which is kind of her. I had to do it. I need, I need to do it. Well, today we have decided to dedicate our quiz to time. Yes, because time is the most important thing we have. And frankly, since everything is related to time, we can ask you anything. Yeah, that's good to okay. know. Okay, <laughs> but before let's introduce our contestants, beginning with today's guest, Davina Rose Levin, a creator Hi. and consultant from Chicago and also a collaborator of the Weekly Mag. Welcome, Adina. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, on your website you say you are jack of all trades, master of some. What are these? <laughs> well, right now I do business development and marketing and consulting and all sorts of communications. Um, before that, I wrote ads for Broadway shows. Yay! Wow. When I was in college, I studied economics and statistics, as well as Spanish and Catalan. I've also danced my whole life. I do lettering, which is kind of like calligraphy, and I like to sing at my synagogue. Whoa! Yeah, wow. master of some. Pretty Definitely. impressive. No? impressive. Well, yeah. So I mean, many diverse skills. That's right. I mean, I'm not good at all of those things, but yes. <laughs> some of them, you could say yes. <laughs> And let's say hello as well to our quiz usual suspects, Mark Broderick and Patricia Scalona. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. 
Last week, Patricia's win was matched at the 11th hour by our guest contestant, Rachel Brown. So, Adina, uh, however daunting it seems, it's possible to compete against our champion. She's not so powerful as she, she might think. She crushes me every week. Right, she right, Patricia? She crushes me every week. How do but you that's feel? that's different. I mean, it's easy to crush a man. I mean... <laughs> oh, yeah, you deserve that, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's begin our multiple choice round about time. Remember the guy that confessed to stealing a sign at El Museo del Prado? Then he told us of a time when time stopped for him. Listen. I remember one time that uh, I, I felt the sensation that the time is like a stop it because you are in danger. And I was uh, swimming with a friend and we were almost uh, die. We were, yeah, because uh, there was very uh, wavy, the very bad weather in Sitges. And then it was for a moment was like the, the, the time was like a stop it because my brain was very, very, very quick thinking the possibilities. Wow, so how did the story continue? I'm gonna give you three options and let's see what do you think. Option A, a wave miraculously dragged him back onto the shore. Option B, a man with a paddle boat took him on board. And option C, an off-beauty lifeguard helped him back to the beach and insisted on giving him mouth-to-mouth -mouth <laughs> resuscitation. <laughs> Oh, I definitely have the answer to that. Which one is? It has to be C. I knew He's it. in Sitges, he's swimming in the ocean, <laughs> a man gives him mouth to mouth, that, that's the obvious answer. That's the obvious answer. <laughs> what do you think? I'm gonna go with A. With option A. And yeah. Patricia? What was the paddle thing? The, was a, a man with a paddle boat took him on board. That was A as That well? was B. Option B. A okay, is so a wave miraculously dragged him back onto the shore. I'm gonna go with B. B. All right, so, well, Here's how he saved his life. And we, we were lucky because one wave uh, take us, uh, took us uh, to, the, to the shore. So we, we, we were okay. No, ma no man, no mouth to mouth. Well done, Adina. Job well, well done. done. She started. Beginner's luck, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you if you've had any similar uh, situations in which time stopped for you? And then we're going to ask the same question to you and your answer, Mark. <laughs> I did bungee jumping once, and that was like a very pretty similar experience of time stopping in my heart also. <laughs> but yes, never again. I had a wave, I mean, almost crushed me when I was in Mexico. I remember I must have been six or seven years old, and I definitely felt, <gasps> but then my uncle saved me, so we were all good. OK, OK. Should I we have skip the answer? so many that I just don't know where to go with that. Uh, That's you know, getting related you know, to we'll just probably leave it there because I have so many of them. I almost got hit by a truck once oh. and it just, it like wow. literally skimmed the top of my nose. I guess that was Ooh. the closest time oh where I was like, God. oh my oh, God. Shit, my life went in front of my leg. But apart from that, I have lots of others. But All whatever. right. Well, after that, time can be stopped, but also can be wasted. We asked a girl where she wasted her time. <laughs> <laughs> this is what she told us. Just uh, wait a little bit. Easy there, Here we go. Easy. In class, yeah, always in class. Half the math class that I have in my life. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm in another planet. It's, it's incredible. Well, she gets bored on maths class. How original. But why does she find math lessons boring? Option A. She hates math so much, she would eliminate the subject. Option B, she likes math so much that she finds so much information necessary. And okay. option C, she thinks math should be taught for money purposes only. Okay. Those are the options. What do you think about I that? I think she loves math. She loves math, option B, right? Yeah. I think she loves money, option C. <laughs> she loves money, option C. Who doesn't, right? Mark? It has to be the teacher's fault. If you hate something, it's because of the teacher. I'm gonna go with A. A, She hates option it, she like, yeah, bad teacher. All right, very interesting today what's going on here. Here is why she gets so bored. No, I, I like math, but sometimes they don't really do the class useful, so you, you, lost a lot, you lose a, a lot of time. 
Zero. <laughs> Zero <laughs> for me. Hey, Sorry I'm a slow for starter this week. I'm a slow starter this week. Usually I'm fast I off the blocks. I just wanted to point out that he got a zero. Isn't Thank that the other way around, actually? You I'm start usually well. fast and then I get slow. <laughs> let's, so. see, uh, let's see, Sergi, how good uh, they were at maths. Was it an easy subject for you or the opposite? It was one of my best subjects in school growing up. I assumed that. I remember people <laughs> used to call me in the middle of the night for help with their calculus homework. In, in the middle of the night? For like, calculus. Kind of. Yeah, like 11, 12, yeah. I don't know, but if you were to ask me a calculus question now, I would be like, what? It's like another language. I just, in one ear and out the other. <laughs> Sorry, no. I was brutally bad, as you can probably imagine. Terrible that Matt's had a terrible teacher, and in general, I'm terrible with money as well, so. Oh. <laughs> Do you know the fires at San Juan? Do you know the fires that we yes. have at San yeah, Juan? I burnt off my math books like the last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. such I a took them all and I burned them. That's how good I was at math. Yeah, that says it all. In yeah. fact, yeah. Interesting. All right. So last but not least, I want you to think of all the hours we have spent doing one of the most exciting things in life: <laughs> waiting in a queue. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Right. Uh, so here we go. For a concert when I was a teenager, I remember we went with all my friends uh, in the morning and we were queuing the line, like, because we want to be on the first line of the concert. So we went there in the morning and we spent the day in the line. But that didn't, I didn't feel like I was wasting my time because I was going to watch my favorite, I was going to, to be on my favorite band's concert. Cues, we love cues. All right, but the question is, for which rock band oh, did she queue for the whole day? Oh, oh God. Option A, U2. That's not the attitude, guys. <laughs> like, keep the excitement up. Okay, all right. no, okay. No, it's a no, very no, exciting it was question. A terrible band. <laughs> U2 is option A. Okay. Option B is Green Day, and option C is El Canto del Loco. Oh God, oh, that's easy. Goodness that's me. so easy. El Canto del Loco. El Look Canto at the loco. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about what it? What's that about? I, no, I love El Canto del Loco. From when I when I first came here, when I was 16, and I was just in love. It was would you queue for them? But, no. What? Would you? Would you? Would I line up stand for them? On a, exactly. Oh no. At Primavera, I already waited an hour to be in the front row for oh, Rosalia, so I think I'm I've, I'm done with lines. But I'm going to go for this. I'm going to go with Green Day. Green Day. Green so Day. actually, the right answer would be, how long would you be on a line, I mean, waiting on a line for Green Day, for, for example? For Green Day? I'm not going to wait in line. But maybe she did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patricia? I'm going to go with you two, if only you because two. I left. That's I did 16 exciting, hours right? for you two so, once. Yeah, I did really? a 14-hour queue for you two today, once. Today, yeah. like one yeah. answer each, one different answer each. Yeah. OK, very interesting. So here is the answer. El canto del loco. <laughs> the Spanish band. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> she probably doesn't even know who you two are. This is so fair, guys, so fair. Okay, so the question is, what music band would you spend one day queuing for if you haven't done that already? I, I did actually do it uh, for the Rolling Stones. Mm. Yeah, nice. uh, whole day. But like I started there like at 8 in the morning and then we went in at 9 maybe, I don't know, I can't remember. Enjoyed it? Oh, very much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Was the it show, not the queue. <laughs> it was a great show, yeah. Okay. okay. Adina. Um, well, I already told you I, lined for, I was in line for an hour for Rosalia, but for 14 hours, who would I, or like all day, who would I, I don't know, maybe if it were 1997 and the Spice Girls. Yeah. Which, oh, no. <laughs> I've done the queue for Michael Jackson. I did 15 hours for Michael Jackson. Wow. I've done 14 wow. hours for you too. I've done 12 hours for Metallica. If I had to wait what? and queue 24 hours for a band, Led Zeppelin if they come back. Really? If they all came back, Led Zeppelin, I would queue for two days if I necessary. Hours, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard. No problem. No problem. All right. So the score. Okay, and we have a draw, one point for each. At exactly. The, moment. the score we'll is very interesting. Next. Let's see, and let's move forward on time, right to the speed challenge, of course. Oh, course. But not before a bit of stand-up comedy with the giggles. Have a look. <laughs> I was in Paris the other day. If you don't know Paris, it's a beautiful little village full of cafes, burned down cathedrals, and a country formerly known as Germany. And I saw the movie Empire Strikes Back. Amazing classic movie in English and French completely different. In English, the way it ends is you have Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker battling to the very death. Suddenly Vader turns to Luke, he says, Psh, Luke, I am your father. Amazing. 
In French, completely different. I don't know what it is about the French language, a certain je ne sais quoi, no? But in French, Vader and Luke, they're fighting. Suddenly, Vader turns to Luke. He says, Jean-Luc, Jean-Luc, je suis tout papa. <laughs> So let's spend time with our speed challenge. Two points per right answer. And you will need to claim your right to answer with our three old friends, the bell, the horn, and the hammer. Mm -hmm, exactly, and the bell, as always, is for our guest uh, today, Adin. Anyway, we could never separate Patricia and Mark from the horn and the hammer. No, no, exactly. What? They're just, <laughs> they're just like part of their body, right? All right, so it's this round, cheekier and cheekier. this know, round, yeah. guys, will be really, really, really fast, like lightning fast. Like here it goes, it's gone, like boom. So get ready. All right? all right, we'll start naming a book, movie, or TV series related to time travel, and you just Oof. have to finish the title. No oh time traveling God. allowed. I mean, it's not allowed to travel to the future to get the right answer. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Three. Two, one, here we go. The time Mark? I met Susie. The time I met Susie, that's incorrect. The time. <laughs> it's the the time. time. Three, two. Travelers? No, that's the incorrect. Time machine. The time, the time machine. machine. Oh Point God. goes to no one. Doctor? Who? Uh, correct, uh, correct. Wow. She, rung, she rung the bell. She rung the bell. All right. Point to her. Mm -hmm. Groundhog. Mark. Day. Correct. Day. Peggy Sue. Patricia. Got married. Got married. Mm -hmm. Correct. Twelve. Mark. Days of Christmas? No. <laughs> Patricia. Monkeys? Correct. Yes. Monkeys. Patricia. Yeah. Monkeys. Monkeys. <laughs> Ready, guys? Planet off. Oh. Patricia. Apes. Apes. Correct. Point right. to Patricia. Back to the future. To the Excellent. future. About Mark. Oh, fuck. About time. About time, that's right. <laughs> Point to Mark, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so unexpected, right? <laughs> that was Ready? Nice. All right. we, haven't, nice. we haven't finished here, right? Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, Deja? Mark, Vu, correct. Yes. Yes. Uh, he's doing well today. I'm trying. Uh, guys, the butterfly. Mark? The butterfly effect. Correct. Yes. Point to Mark. Life on? Patricia. Mars? Mars. Mars. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Oh, I wasn't sure about that one. OK, get ready. Buck Rogers in the 25th. Mark? Century? Century, correct. Sophia's? Mark. Choice. No. Nope. Uh, Sophie's choice. <laughs> that's, that's World. 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 That's right. Point to Patricia. Oh. And Last one, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective, Mark. Dirk Gently's Police Detective Agency? Agency, correct, correct, well that's done. right. Excellent. Well done. So tell me, what is your favorite film, book, or TV show about time travel? Oh. Oh, that's easy. I gotta start learning these shows. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what's going on here? But you, you are ringing the bell gently as well, as it happened last week as well. So, so I don't know about a favorite. I did watch Doctor Who with David Tennant. <laughs> um, the other day I watched Interstellar. I liked that movie. I don't know. What about you guys? What are your favorites? Um, my favorite book, actually, it is it. Although it got made into a um, film as well. It's called The Time Traveler's Wife. Yeah. Uh, it's a sweet, sweet book and so original. Just as a reminder, <laughs> the score right now is with Mark on the lead with 13 points. You're kidding Patricia me. right after challenging him with 11 points and our, our great guest, Adina, uh, on the third position with five well-deserved points. It's okay because I'm gonna lose five points in the next one. Yes, so but fine. the game we'll see, is we'll not see. over, right? Exactly. So it's time for the last round. Three points for every right answer. Not one, not two, but three. Well. Today we will put you through the clue challenge. And it works like this. Marcella is going to give you clues one by one. And as soon as you know the answer, you ring the bell, honk the horn, or hit the hammer. If you miss, the other two can have a go. If nobody gets it right, Marcella will go on reading until someone gets it right, okay? Okay, and since today the quiz is about time, we want you to guess the name of a famous astrophysicist. <laughs> a oh famous astrophysicist. God. And here are the clues. That astrophysicist is a man. 
He is very famous but not for being a scientist. He recently hit the news for supporting a mission to deflect an asteroid. He's a very well-known musician. Oh, One of his name? songs is about space-time travel. The title of this song is 39. Mark Bruce Dickinson? That's not correct. Mm. Let's keep And playing. he is the guitar player of the rock band Queen. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> that Can I go again? Yes, yes. 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 It's Brian May. It's yes. Brian May. That's okay. correct. Brian May, apart right. from being Queen's guitar player and composer, is an accomplished astrophysicist who obviously has a say in science matters. Well done, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you think the humanity will ever be able to travel in time? Absolutely. Not. No? <laughs> if, if you find, a black, hole, if you find a black hole, you can travel in time. Yeah, well, so you say plenty of black holes have been found and that's not possible. Your apartment, you have to for example? travel at the speed of light <laughs> to time travel, Mark. You have to travel at the speed of light and that's really challenging. Three more points at stake, guys. Now we are looking for a date. Yes, a day and a month in the calendar. Pay attention to the clues. Mm. Okay, so it's a summer day in the Southern Hemisphere. On this day, Catholic Church commemorates the death of Pope Hilarius. Pope Hilarius. <laughs> Pope Hilarius. Yes. yes, it was the Pope it's, Hilarius. It's, it's his and I bet he was really okay. boring, right? <laughs> it's a day of February. An old Irish tradition marked that was the only day women were allowed to propose to men. Patricia. Um, that's the 29th of February. That's right. Yes. 29th of yes. February. Well done. The extra day we have every four years to keep the calendar in sync with the seasons. Well done. Excellent. Sorry, is, was oh, there a pope called Pope Hilarious? <laughs> or is that just a joke? <laughs> no. Well, uh, Maybe it, it is hilarious, hilarious uh, for you, but uh, yes, that's yes. Uh, actually the name. Okay. It might be a joke. Okay. 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 I, thought, I thought it was like a trick that of was his not, parents. It was not a joke. We don't like to joke with uh, questions. <laughs> Maybe it was the origin for what, Hillary. Or popes. Hilarious Hillary. <laughs> the older okay. version We can of joke about popes, but not with the Pope questions. We are really serious no, with the questions. No, we are questions, taking this read. very seriously. <laughs> and the score is 14 okay. points for you Patricia, 5 points for Adina and Mark. Is in the lead with uh, 16 points. You are doing great. You are our guest and you are doing great. It's my dad's. Well, you still have a chance <laughs> because to spy things up, the last clue challenge is worth five points. But if you get it wrong, five points will be taken from you. So things can Here change. You go. I have nothing now to Now we lose. are going to take <laughs> the time machine ourselves because you will have to guess a big event in the future. Obviously, nothing is sure. But let's say it's an event we can expect to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? So this event, this event will happen on Earth. This event depends on humans to take place. It's expected to happen in uh, 2026 in uh, Catalonia. And this event... Adina? Adina? What? Have you? Well, it's definitely not the U.S. election. <laughs> no. Because that's not happening in Catalonia. It's not happening in Catalonia. Well, well I know, I know. <laughs> Let I know me give you more details. Oh, no, I think I know. Okay. Because I know there's a very famous Catalan who died in 1926. He got hit by a tram car, right? Okay. He's a senor keep named talking. Gaudí, right? Yeah. Okay, keep talking. And uh, he... I guess he designed this beautiful church. I mean, I pass it every time I go to synagogue. All right. It's called um, La Sagrada Familia. Yeah, well done, yeah. absolutely. And Amazing. I believe we're finally going to open it, right? Yes, that's the right answer, Excellent. and that's a moral victory. Well, don't they always say like, oh, like it's not going to be completed until my grandkids are born, right? No, yeah, well, exactly. So now we don't have to well, see that. Well, of course, it's the I'm day of the inauguration. Be correct, Adina. Congratulations. Yeah, the inauguration of Sagrada Familia, whose works have become a synonym of a long time. All right, job well done. And the final score is, uh, well, 16 points for Mark. Which 14. makes him the winner! Yes, yes. finally! For but not Patricia. the moral winner. And 10 <laughs> points for Adina. Who is the moral winner, according to the quiz master? I'm just happy. <laughs> Next time, Betta. <laughs> Well, congratulations all. Thank you so much, Adina, for coming to play with us for the first time. Thank Mark and Patricia, thank you. Until uh, next time. Awesome. Have you had a yep. good time, Adina? 
Yeah, it was super fun. Yes. I hope I, I, I don't want to snort again. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's where okay. That, that was a moment. It was a <laughs> the highlight of the whole thing. I will definitely go back to singing Spice Girls. <laughs> that, that I'd like to go back. Can you see it? Spice Girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could, do you want to go back to wannabe? Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what I want, what I really, really want. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna really, really, really want to sing it. Wow. That was good. Well done. Well, Adina, we were also very impressed. I don't know about you, Sergi. I was so impressed when yeah. she guessed uh, yeah. the opening of the Sagrada Familia so quickly. That and was danced and sang the Spice Girls right yeah. after. <laughs> I mean, I should hope all of that Catalan culture I learned in university, one of my many skills, would come to serve me here at the weekly <laughs> mag. We okay, <laughs> well done, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sergi. Until next time. And so much for the weekly mag today. I hope you've enjoyed the show as much as we have. We'll be back next week with more. Until then, follow us online and practice your English, watching every section online, interviews, games, stand-up comedies, tips, and more. Check them all out. And don't forget to post your solution to the guest word puzzle by Marie Serra, which is, it's a disadvantage but it could be a useful hat. Eight letters. Stay tuned. Until then, keep up your English and have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.